Hello, and thank you for joining me for another lesson from The Faith of Jesus. Uh, it's been such a great book that we've been able to go through, and I thank you so much for uh, keeping up with me on it. I've talked to so many people who have been watching these, and it's such a blessing to know that, uh, you know, the people are tuning in. So thank you so much. Today we're on Lesson 22, Personal Surrender to God. And as always, before we jump in, let's say a prayer. Hmm. Dear Lord in heaven, Lord, we love you so much, and we want you to be so real in our life every day. We just want to pray to have you be here with us now, Lord, through the Holy Spirit. And may it touch our hearts and illumine our minds as we learn more from your amazing word, Lord. And we learn more about how we can surrender ourselves to your will. We can die to self and live through you and your promises, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Well, let's dive right in. So, uh, this first section only has one part, and it's a necessary condition. Number one, what step is essential for salvation? Mark 16, 16. You remember? Matthew, Mark. Mark. 16, 16. And this is Jesus speaking here. In my Bible, it's in red. and some Bibles, it'll be in red if Jesus is speaking. And in my book, even in the Old Testament, the words of God are in blue. So I think that's pretty cool. So 1616, Jesus says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So what step is essential? Believing. Believing. And the more you search and the more you pray, the more you believe. So just keep searching and keep searching, and you'll just believe more and more and more. It's amazing. And then, uh, and then baptism. And we've talked about baptism before, but baptism is so amazing. Such a powerful, powerful thing to do. <clears throat> Next section is God's tender invitations. I like that. They're tender. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Number two, what calling did Jesus make to Levi? And for that, we're going to go to Luke. So we're right at the beginning of Luke because we were at the end of Mark, Matthew, Mark. So we're right in Luke right now. So flip over to 527. Luke 527. And God's word says, After these things, he went out and saw a, a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. So what calling did Jesus make to Levi? He said, follow me. And I don't know if any of you guys have seen the series Chosen. If you haven't, you need to watch it. It's amazing. And, um, <clears throat> and you can see Jesus call out to him. And it's just such a powerful scene. Best actor I've ever seen play uh, Jesus. Really, really great. It's called The Chosen. You can get it for free on your phone. You can stream it on your TV, all sorts of stuff like that. All right, uh, so we're going to stay in Luke. We're just going to go to the next verse because the next question is, how did Levi respond? Uh, Luke 5.28. <clears throat> so he left all, rose up, and followed him. He followed him. He left everything and followed him. Just like we need to leave our old life behind and follow Jesus. And it's so hard because we want to hold on to things. And it's something that we struggle with for a long time and that I still struggle with. We need to let go of this world and completely surrender and follow him. Um, ah, then our lives can be truly transformed. Number four, what other gentle calling does Jesus make? <clears throat> for that, we're going to go um, to the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible. We'll go 320, Revelation 320. I've been doing a Revelation study with Pastor John and some other people. And uh, we haven't got to 320 yet. But let's read what it says. This is Jesus speaking again. We, we see the words in red. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, 
I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. So what other gentle calling does he make? He stands at the door and knocks. He could just open the door and let himself in. He could kick the door down. He could snap his fingers and make the door disappear. But he doesn't. He knocks the door and he patiently waits. He knocks at the door. If anyone hears his voice and opens, he will come in. Amazing. Amazing. He wants us to choose. That's the love thing. That's the love is God wants us to love him and to love like he loves. And in order to do that, we have to be able to make that choice. Number five, what decision, was, what decision must we make now? <clears throat> Sorry, I have a little bit of a frog in my throat. I am not sick, however. Um, Acts twenty two sixteen. Acts twenty two sixteen. What decision much what must we make now? Oh Muta, are you gonna join us for, for uh, Bible study? I think you might need to go. Alright, scoochie scoochie scooch. Alright, twenty two sixteen. Acts twenty two sixteen. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So we must, right now, we need to not wait. We need to arise right now and be, and, and be baptized. We need to call on Him. We need to be washed away of our sins. That's something we need to do right now. All right, last section. What must I do? Do not postpone the decision to accept the Lord. Don't wait. It's telling us not to wait. So we're going to stay in Acts. So we're going to go to 24:25. Acts 24:25. Now as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, "Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you." And uh, I could make a, a comment on that, but instead, let's read uh, what Ellen G. White has to say about it. And this is from Acts of the Apostles, uh, 426 and 427. Uh, Final opportunity lost. But instead of per permitting his convictions to lead him to repentance, Felix sought to dismiss these unwelcome reflections. The interview with Paul was cut short. A ray of light from heaven had been permitted to shine upon Felix. When Paul reasoned with him concerning righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, that was his heaven-sent opportunity to see and forsake his sins. He had slighted his last offer of mercy. Never was he to receive another call from God. Now, I hope that none of us get to that point. I feel like God is very patient and very long-suffering, but with, but with Felix it was a different thing. And with, we all have our own our own journey. So don't put it off. You don't know when Jesus is coming. He comes like a thief in the night. He's coming quickly. You don't want to wait until later. Mutai, you've got to move. Okay, we've been visited a lot by my kitty cat. Okay, number two, together with your family, make a decision for God. Oh, this is a very popular verse. This is a beautiful verse. For this, we're going to go uh, back to Joshua. So we're going to go all the way back. <clears throat> In the New Testament, and we're going to go Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then Joshua. I'm going to go Joshua uh, 24, 15. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. This is such a beautiful verse. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day who you will serve, whether the gods which your father serves, served, that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hmm. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Together with your family, make that decision for God. Um, no, just through patient example, try to be an example to your family. Don't don't push it. Just be an example and draw them in with love and with care. And they'll follow you. They'll, uh, they'll see the change. And the change in your lives as well. I think my family can see all the prayers God have answered in our lives. And it's hard for them to deny that power. Uh, 
Number three, make the decision right now. Hebrews 3.15. So we're going to flip all the way to the other end of the Bible, close to Revelation. Hebrews, if you've hit James or Peter, you've gone too far. So I'll give you guys a second. Hebrews 3.15. Hebrews 3.15. Make a decision right now. Hebrews 3.15. The Lord's word says, While it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Let me say that again. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Don't harden your hearts to it. Don't go, oh, I mean, the power that you can receive right now from God is amazing. It's life transforming. And to be honest with you guys, I haven't been having a great week this week. I've been having, I've been fighting maybe some grouchiness. And I haven't been maybe as cheery as I usually am. I'm not exactly sure why. And, and um, but I'll tell you what. Now, the fact that I have God in my life and I have the Lord in my life makes it so much better. I can't, I mean, before I had God in my life, it was nothing like it is now. So it doesn't mean there won't be rough times and there won't be hard times. But um, it's amazing. And you can make that decision right now. You can make that, de that decision today. And every day we should reaffirm that relationship. We, can, we should be making that decision every day. Number four, ask for baptism. Acts 8.36. So Acts is a few back. Remember Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Acts 8.36 Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Let's read for uh, 37 too. Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Oh, Amazing. It's just amazing to admit that and to know that with your whole heart and to ask for that baptism. And we talked about baptism in, in another, we did a full study on baptism, so you can watch, uh, go back and watch that one. Number five, finally, trust fully in Jesus. So we're going to go to Philippians. So we're going to go this uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So that's a good place to end it, is that trust in Him. Trust to know that when you pray that the Lord has done it. You have to pray and you have to know that the, you have to trust the Lord that uh, he answered your prayer. All right, at the very end it says, I believe that the Lord calls me to join his church. I respond joyfully to his calling and I surrender my life through baptism. If any of you guys are new believers in the new believers class and you'd like to um, maybe do some studying and be baptized, I should reach out to Pastor John. It's amazing. And I know um, if you have any reservations about it, about it being in public or anything like that, still talk to him about it. Just talk to him. Open that dialogue and see and talk to someone about these, reser these reservations. Don't hold back because of the spectacle that it can seem like it is if you're shy or something or if you think you have to give your whole testimony, which you don't. It is powerful, your testimony, though. All right, guys. Well, um, this was a good lesson. I didn't have a lot of supporting stuff to go with it because I felt like all the verses were really good, really straightforward. And um, I hope that we can all surrender to God each and every day. Let's say a prayer. Hmm. Dear powerful Father in heaven, King of the universe, Lord, please be with each one of my friends as they seek you and search you, Lord. Be a light under their path, Lord. Let them hear you knocking, Lord. And may they answer your call. And may they accept you every day and die to self every day 
and a spiritual baptism to you. And if anyone's holding anything in their heart, any sins that are holding them back, please let them bring those to you. And if anybody wants to get baptized and they are maybe feeling apprehensive about it, give them the courage to talk about it. Give them the courage to reach out to one of their fellow brothers in Christ and, and tell them that it's been on their heart. And Lord, let them be able to receive that amazing gift. Lord, thank you for everything you've done. Please keep us safe, keep us healthy, keep us spiritually healthy until your soon return. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me once again. Um, I look forward to seeing so many of you at church. I can't wait till we get to start singing and having this class in person. But until then, we're just going to do this whole, whole lesson book, and we're getting close. All right. That's my cat. I got another kitty cat. Hey, let's, let's say goodbye, Luna. Hey, Luna, say goodbye. Bye. <laughs>